This week on Chef on a Mission, I'm heading to the Maui gas platform in the Tasman Sea. What's this guy going to be given to us? To cook a four-course meal for 60 crew. Have you had truffles before? Making a few up to men, actually. To earn my keep, I'll have to live and work like the crewman. But will I sink or swim? He's got a lot of hard work to cut out for him. This week, my mission brings me to beautiful Taranaki. When they first told me I was off to Maui, I had visions of a nice holiday in Hawaii. But oh no, it's 35 kilometres out into the Tasman Sea, the Maui A gas platform. While I'll be joining 50 others to work on deck and experience their way of life, then get into the galley and cook them a meal with a difference. But first up, I've got a bunch of survival training to do. And there's no point in delaying it because I'm a tad terrified, but I'd better get on with it. The company that operates the Maui gas platform, Shell Todd, puts all its employees through rigorous safety training before they even leave New Plymouth. Getting in the life raft is the hardest bit. I hope I never, ever have to do that unless I go on a huge diet. And if I thought that was hard, this next exercise is teaching me how to get out of a submerged helicopter upside down. Simon, welcome to Shell Todd. Good swim? Well, I'm just glad to be alive, thanks, Tim. You're welcome, mate. Just need to remind you, though, it's not over yet. We've got something else for you. Uh-oh. It's a medical to make sure I'm not going to die out there. Well, let's do your blood pressure first, then. Big breath. OK, so I just want to have a look in your ears as well. So this is a lung function test. <laughs> keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Nearly there, nearly there. <laughs> Something everybody should do every morning. <laughs> so we've got the urine test to do. Toilet's just out this way. This is your pot that you will go and pee in, and I'll follow you on the way through. Come on, then. <laughs> oh, boy, the things we do. Lovely. Thank you. Simon, you're looking worried. How did it go? Pass, flying colour. Oh, great. <laughs> Fantastic. So now we've got to get in the helicopter, right? Absolutely. Now, Come let's on, do let's it. Go. Awesome. I need a history lesson on Maui. How long has that thing been there and how long is it going to be there for? Maui was discovered in 1969. Then it took about 10 years to build the platform and we started producing in 1979. The people working on the platform, how long are they out there for at one stretch? Generally for 14 days and then they have 14 days where they go back to their home environment. And let me guess, they're big eaters. But I have to say, you're in for some big competition because I know that the chefs that are already out there do a great job and everyone looks forward to going out onto the Maui platforms to eat the food out there. Here we are, Simon. Helicopters, New Zealand. I'm going to hand you on to Scotty, who's Thanks, going Greta. to do the check-in for you. Good right here, now. Simon. Right, have you come through here, Simon, and we'll find a suit that'll fit you. What to do, then? Man, here right. I come. Fitting me like a glove. <laughs> that over there. I think you're good to go. I've survived the pool training. I've passed the medical. The build-up's been intense, but I'm cleared for takeoff and good to go. Next stop, Maui A. Here we go. The anticipation's killing me. Hey, fellas. Let's just hope I don't have to put any of that underwater training into practice. It's about a 20 minute flight out to the platform, which is 35 k's out into the Tasman Sea. It's fairly routine for the helicopters to fly out to the platform several times a week. Awesome. And look at all those white caps down there. They look scary. 
If the wind was just four knots stronger than this, the chopper would turn back rather than risk a dangerous landing. So I'm lucky I can land today. Here we are on Maui, eh? If you've seen the movie Waterworld, that's kind of what it feels like right now. It's all metal. There's a hell of a swell, the wind's blowing, the chopper's just leaving us, so we're stranded for the moment. It's good to welcome be here at last. Yeah. yeah, welcome on board. It's blowing 40 thingies out there at the moment. Yeah, that's not very nice, it's still 40 odd knots. Uh, about four metre seas at the moment, and we've had it up to sort of 12, 14, 16 metre seas. So. It's almost three times what we're yes. seeing right yeah, now. That's right. Bloody long way down. It How is high a long are way. we here now? 30 odd metres off the sea. Jesus. Time for a tour of the platform. 60 people live and work on Maui A at any one time, and it's their job to keep gas flowing to the mainland from the giant Maui gas field deep beneath the seabed. I cook on gas, and, I, and my barbies run by gas, but I, I want to know how the hell do you get it from way down there up here? This trap down 3,500 metres below the seabed, all we do is poke a hole in it and uh, give it a means of getting to the surface. If you come over here, I'll show you where it goes back to the beach. So you can see the main leg coming down there. Yeah. Just to the left-hand side of that is our main gas pipeline. So that gas pipeline is a continual pipeline straight back to Oanui. 35 kilometres away. Amazingly, it's been in operation for the past 32 years. My tour is over, now I have to earn my keep. Well, we'll go and do some painting, eh? Painting? Painting. I haven't got the heart to tell him I'm no Picasso. Hey, Good day, mate. How are you? Good All I'm trying to do here, Simon, is used to be an old structure here. I've taken it away and we're going to clean it up. We're going to jump in there and paint it. OK. Thank you. Beautiful, thank you. Well, this is the first to wear this get up, and it's the first to be on the platform, and it's the first to ever do any spray painting. At least I look like the real deal. Oh, that, there you go. Just like icing a cake, sort of. He's uh, doing well as a painter. Beautiful. You got Robbie still? I'm not sure I'm a natural at this and I'm pretty sure the guys are humouring me here. Excellent. But it's a good opportunity to do some research for their big feast. What do you want for dinner tomorrow night? Oh, I'm not too fussy, as long as it's healthy. What's your favourite? Oh, anything seafood. Prawns? I don't mind prawns, yep. So far, so good, but the guys who work here are used to a certain style of food. The cooks in the galley crank out 180 meals a day and the crew love their work. Don, my cook, he's the best cook I've had out here uh, well, since I've been here. I've been here for coming on 10 years. The food out here is absolutely amazing. You know, if you ask someone about life on Maui, eh, they often comment on, on uh, how good the food is and how good we're looked after. The money that they earn out here means that they can afford to eat good food, so they do recognise quality food and do understand flavours. Guys, they come and tell us the wives hate us because they're putting on a bit too much weight. <laughs> Time for me to see for myself. Now, that's what I call a sandwich. Look at the size of the thing. Look at me. Can I pitch on with you fellas? This isn't your everyday sandwich, is it? I mean, it's a fairly serious sized sandwich, isn't it? <laughs> it's like you're trapped out here, surrounded by water, and uh, got the best food in the world. <laughs> Not bad. So you know why I'm here, I've got to like, cook you guys dinner tomorrow. Yeah, let's say yeah. you want some white bank fritters out of something. <laughs> I wish, I wish. <laughs> What's your favourite meal? Uh, mine's lamb chunk. Lamb chunk? <laughs> you got your lamb fan? You like lamb? Yeah. I don't mind uh, roast pork. Oh. Roast pork, yeah. yeah. Oh, macaroni, I don't mind macaroni. Yeah. Macaroni, macaroni cheese, cheese, yeah. yeah. So that, that must be a big thing. I mean, like, out here, you've got chefs cooking all this great food for you. You go home, you must almost look forward to coming back to work for the food, because it must that must be a highlight of the day, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. A lot of the times it is, especially when the weather's, like, cold, like it has been, eh? Yeah. Sort of, like, morale booster. <laughs> so if the boys have got good food, they're pretty happy, eh? Yeah. 
which makes my job even harder. And to add to my woes, there aren't even enough seats for the whole crew to eat at once. We've got limited seats, so um, the guys come in, get their meal, and then go so that the, um, the rest of the boys can come in and use the tables, so yeah, they don't hang around too long. I'm planning a plated four-course dinner, but I may have to do it in two sittings. Hey, Simon. That sandwich was awesome. I loved it. You're welcome, Simon. There's no way with 20 seats that I could get 60 people on a four course. It just would be physically impossible. Impossible. Yeah. Pigs don't fly, you know, <laughs> and I don't even believe pink ones do. <laughs> I'm a lunatic for even thinking yeah. that it's remotely impossible. Right. Well, I got a fair bit to think about, right. so I'll go and think while they put me to work outside. The success of my mission depends on me giving them all a four course experience. I don't know what I'm gonna do. Am I gonna just do it in the Bamery like they have every day? That's not going to give me that 5% magic that I have got to deliver these guys. I, I think I've got to talk the, the PIC into allowing me to change their format for a night so I can give them an experience that they'll never forget. I'm on Maui A to cook the crew a big dinner, but the success of my mission depends on delivering a plated four-course meal, something I'll have to ask the big boss about. I want to give them, you know, a real experience. I, you know, and I was thinking if it was possible to give them a four-course dinner plated, but there's no physical way that, you know, I can do that out of the kitchen in 45 minutes with them. So what sort of time frame are we needing? Could we do two sittings? Yes. So if I, you know, if I said it's a 50 minute sitting. Well, why don't we say an hour? An hour. And go five till six and six till seven. If you take out um, yourself and the Wendell staff and the likes, there's exactly two sittings. Two sittings of 19 people. I'll tell you what, right now that's music to my ears if we can do that, because then I can really try and give them something a bit special. Now that's sorted, it's back to work. Simon, this is Willie Tungari, he's my uh, scaffolding okay, foreman. Willie. We've got a job up top there. Well, but we need some scaffolding gear to finish the job off, so what we've got to do, mate, is uh, we just got to pick some tube up, carry it up here, I'll get the rest of the boys and we'll just sort of make them a chain. We'll pass the gear up, all right? You, you want Yeah, that's the one. Make it nice and comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Right there, you follow Leroy, bro. He'll show you where to go. I guess while I'm lugging these pipes around, I can ask the boys what they fancy for dinner. What do you like? Oh, you can't have to cook us a mean ball up, bro. Oh, you want a boiler? Uh, yeah. Isn't that what you're out here for? Well, you have to come to my place for a boiler. Why do you reckon if I did like a four course dinner, like an entree, a soup, a main course, and then a dessert all on while you sit down, you know? Yeah, no, that'll be good. Yeah. All plated and stuff. So, uh, are you talking about the main meal? Is, you know how you get your big dinner plates, and then you get that little thing in the middle? No, 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 no I won't do that here, I promise. Because have you seen some of the size of these boys out here? <laughs> They'll have you run off, mate. Don't worry, mate, I won't do that here. They just spring up there like monkeys. Watch this monkey go up. At least I'm getting an idea of what these blokes like to eat. It has to be hearty and a decent size on the plate, because this is hungry work. Hey! Come on, fuck you! Music to my ears. Oh, I might have earned my scone. <laughs> I went up those stairs. You get good tucker on here, that's for sure. Christmas every day, bro. Yeah. And what's your favourite meals out here? Yeah, oh, mate, she's all good out here, bud. I tell you, she's, yeah? she's all good. Yeah. I've got a tough act to follow tomorrow, haven't I? Yeah, the other night he had these stuffed squid. Stuffed squid? Yeah. I was going to, you know, try and give you a really good bit of lamb and then serve a, a cauliflower and truffle puree with it. Yeah. Have you ever had truffles before? No. Truffles are like, they grow underground and they're like a, they're the most expensive fungus in the world. Yeah. They're about 4,000 bucks a kilo, you know? Sounds all right, eh? Yeah. So, because you guys all eat in like 45 minutes, <coughs> I was talking with Simon about seeing if, um, we could do like from five to six, get one group of you in, feed you an entree, then a soup, then a main course, and then a dessert. 
and then it's from six till seven, get the other half in and do the same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like 40, 50 guys on board, eh? only got 20 seats, 20 seats in the bloody kitchen, so yeah. 19, mate, 19, 19 I've 19, counted. 19. There you go. Be the way to do it, break it up. Well, it seems I've got the crew on my side. Now I've just got to break the news to the kitchen team. Hey, so um, I've been talking to the boys out there about the idea of doing a four-course dinner. Uh, yeah, yeah, Do you guys all still think I'm mad? <laughs> Start raving mad? Yeah. Well, everybody out there seems to like the idea if we do it in two sittings, five till six and then six till seven. Oh, sweet so are you guys on board with it? Yeah. Give me a go. Yeah, Give it a go with me. Sweet Anything's sweet. possible, right? Yeah, <sighs> well, I, I don't see it being possible. It's it's hard enough doing what we do, but having four course with the, uh, the number of guys we have on is going to we're going to be stretched to the limits. So can I just have a nosy around? Sure you can. Whoa! Ice and sugar, sponge mix, crumb mix, corn flour, self-raising flour, good old spaghetti, bean salad, asparagus, you name it, they have it. Aha! Eggs, plenty of eggs. Bok choy, I'm not a big fan of bok choy. Silver beet is such an underrated vegetable. I've got to use it. Tomatoes, apples, lettuces. This is a really good start. And check out the view from the back of the kitchen. It's unbelievable. And I'm feeling a little bit more confident right now because I managed to talk them into the fact that I can do a four course dinner. I can do two sittings, five till six and six till seven. It'll be rock and roll for sure. But right now there's no rest for the wicked because the crew are putting me back to work. The next job I've got to do is climb up this ladder and get into that really confined space up there. And I've got to cut a pipe and replace it. Bit of a tight squeeze. <laughs> Hold that down and pull it, pull it towards it, basically. <laughs> Because of the harsh conditions out here, the maintenance never stops. Things need to be painted and pipes need replacing on a regular basis. There we are. Woo! Time to get out of here. Yeah, well, that's the hard thing. Yeah. Get out of here. For sure the crew's jobs are safe for me. Get me out of here. Let, let's hope you get her in the kitchen, you know. As my first night on Maui A approaches, I'm dead keen to see what John and his team turn out for dinner. No doubt it'll be delicious. Now you've got a beautiful pumpkin feta and olive salad, a coleslaw, which everybody loves, noodle salad, couscous, wonderful vegetables, stir-fried beef, crunchy noodles on the side, and then chicken that's been wrapped in bacon. Dinner's been going like 10 minutes. As you can see, everybody's sitting down, they're getting into it. Uh, they probably want to get it down and get out of here because there'll be another 20 odd guys who want to get in here and eat. This is also a good chance to do some last minute research. What's your favourite? Uh, steak and chips. Eggs. It's pretty hard to beat a good steak, eggs and chips, it doesn't matter where you are. I'm more of a, um, a fish, sort of a roast lamb, stuff that's a bit too expensive to buy in the shop. Yeah. Um, we'll head up, shower up. Well, I've eaten my dinner and it was absolutely delicious. Packed full of flavour, great textures on my whole plate. It was a sensational meal. I've got my work cut out for me because these guys in this kitchen are really delivering some great food. Everybody I've met loves the food they're getting, so it's going to be a hard act to follow. And over there, the, but wait, there's more. There's sticky pudding over there with a butterscotch sauce and custard. And you saw of those stairs I went up and down today? I deserve a helping. I left Auckland at five o'clock in the morning. The day seems to have flashed past in a heartbeat. I've met the crew and what a great bunch of people. They work so hard. They have a pretty good lifestyle though, that kitchen. Man, it's putting out some awesome food. They're doing a great job. Tomorrow I'm back into Taranaki on the chopper in search of some produce so I can cook a fantastic dinner for these guys. But right now, I'm knackered. It's bloody freezing out here. 
It's only 6.30, but I'm gonna go and hit the sack. Day two on Maui A, and I'm hitching a ride back to the mainland to source some local produce for my big dinner. I'm heading back to Taranaki, and I've gotta find myself the main meat dish, which I'm hoping to get some lamb. Now that I've worked out that I can do my four course dinner, I've gotta find just the right ingredient so I can pull it off. And I've been told down on the ports there's a place called Ocean Pearl Fisheries. Going to a seafood shop right on the port, always gonna be good. G'day, how are you? Not too bad. This fish looks good. Unloaded last night. So have you got like a quota? Uh, yep, quota. Yeah, we've got some we own ourselves, but we've got a lease plenty in as well. I suppose you're going to tell me you smoke your own fish as well, do you? Beauty, look at that. What, what are you using? Uh, it's Manuka. Look at the row up there. Yep, oh, that's uh, Warrior Hill Road. How far away is that from being done? Uh, probably another hour at least, I'd say. I'll tell you what, it's pretty hard to go past all this fresh fish. It's not often in a fish shop you see such beautifully presented filleted fish. I'd love to be getting fresh fish, but I've got to cook for 50 odd guys and I don't fancy pan frying fish for 50 in a, on my own. So yep. I'm after some prawn cutlets and some calamari is what I'd like. Sea cuisine's always pretty good, isn't it? It is. And then if I just marinate those in a bit of kiwi fruit, beautiful. I'll have real tender calamari. Here we are, raw prawn cutlets. Still got the tail shell on, which will be great for me to dip it in the tempura batter, drop it in. The boys can pick it up and eat it like a lollipop. Lovely. It might seem kind of strange going to a fresh fish shop and getting frozen seafood, but out there on that platform, I believe that if I do tempura, calamari and prawns, that will get me across the line with these guys. Here's hoping. I've got the first entree sorted out with my seafood and I've spotted some chicken on the boat so I'm going to make a chicken broth and some smoked paprika dumplings for the second course. And what I'm going to do at the table is I'm going to arrive with a little squeezy bottle full of carrot juice. But when I squeeze the carrot juice into the soup, it's going to magically turn into a noodle which will create a little theatre at the table. But I've got to get to their heart through their bellies with the mane, and I gather Buzz the Butcher as the best lamb in town. Buzz also won the title for New Zealand's best middle eye bacon, so it's a shame I'm not cooking breakfast. Simon, what brings you around this neck of the woods? Oh, I'm doing a bit of cooking out on the Maui A platform, and I've got to get to their heart. I mean, look at the selection of sausages and ham hocks and stuff there. You've even got some honeycomb tripe there. that would take you back a few years. I wonder how that would go down if I took some honeycomb tripe out and cooked it up for them. <laughs> Depends on what you tell them it is. I'm after some good lamb back straps. How about those? Is that what you're after? Look at that. Beautiful. Can you imagine if I put a, a mushroom and chicken mousseline on top with a little bit of truffle on it, put that on top and then put a lattice pastry over it and roast it in the oven. And I give them a whole one, so it's a great big giant thing. Because I'll bet you half of them are thinking that, oh, you'll be one of those Auckland restaurant chefs that'll serve me a tiny scallop or something they'll, silly they'll on a great gonna, big plate. They'll think they're going to go hungry or something. Yeah. So I need, uh, I need 50 of them. 50, well. <laughs> and I might grab some chicken breasts that I'll uh, make a chicken mousse out of. Here we go, my friend. Thank you very much. Don't spoil them too much out there. <laughs> I've got my seafood, I've got myself some great lamb and chicken. I hear there's a good place up the road here called Rua Kiwi Gardens. Old style, family run market garden shop. Best vegetables in town and they're going to sort me out with some fantastic vegetables. How you doing? Hello. Neville. That's me. Neville, how are you? How are you? Good. Yeah, good, good. What are you after? So it's your joint. This is it, yeah, this is my joint. <laughs> Awesome. Well, it's a family business here. I'm cooking for a bunch of hard-working guys out on yep. the Maui gas platform. I'm doing a four-course dinner and I want some veggies that are going to... Got to get a bit of greenery and some veggies into yep. them. Yep. We're um, heading up the kareo, um stuff for tomorrow, so 
Come and give us a hand. Mate, that sounds bloody good. Yeah, that like well, you got some gumboots? Oh, you're, you're in the necky, man. All right, <laughs> bring them on. Gum boots. I'll take you. Hey, mate, I've got this flash thing. Well, come on. This is full drive. So is this. <laughs> you want me to drive Let's this? Let's see how we go. That come sounds on. a bit of chill. The guys at Rua Kiwi have a fairly simple philosophy when it comes to veggies. They're fresh every day. We're cutting every day, so <clears throat> that's the that's the key to the whole thing. And we've got good flavour. It's, it's a nice dark, gloomy soil and the flavour comes out in all our like, potatoes and all that, you can actually really taste the difference. Oh, it's beautiful out here. Oh, trees and... Beautiful. You, well, you're after broccoli, are you? Or... Broccoli and collie. <laughs> right, oh, right, 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 I don't get the knife. The I, I get the bucket. Right, oh, let's go. And here's one here. Do you, I suppose you want it nicely trimmed too. How's that? Beautiful thing. That's what I call... Fresh. Fresh. Cauliflower and truffle puree. Come on, I need five of these buggers, not one. Beautiful. Beautiful. Thank you. You got some broccoli up there, yeah? Yep, we have. Here's that extra one. Hey, you guys have come up trumps for me. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> we won't get any fresher, I can guarantee right. it. Righty-o. Right, hey, thank one you very good. much. I've got a chopper to catch at four o'clock, so we're going to move. Bloody Aucklander. A knacky is delivered. I've got the wickedest cauliflowers and broccoli. I've got all my supplies and I'm just in time to board my chopper back to the platform. It's way before dawn on Maui A, eh? but already time for me to rise and shine. Today's my big day. I've got a pretty intimidating lot of blokes to cook a big dinner for, so best I get on with it. But I'll show you my digs on the way to the galley. I've got my box of tricks. I share this room with three other guys. Through here, we're sharing all the showers. Another bedroom here with four bunks. This whole level here and the next level up is all shared accommodation. Like a pretty upmarket backpackers, really. And through here is the mess. Lounge over here where everybody hangs out. And time for me to get in the galley. As I'm kicking things off, the first shift of the day is already hard at work outside. I'll run through the menu of what we're going to do for these guys tonight. The first course we're going to do is the calamari and the prawns. Then we'll make a chicken soup. Then we're going to do a lamb wellington. And then the meringue roulade will be kind of light to finish off. Yes. Yep. My first job is to start preparing my lamb main. I'm just giving this a little bit of colour. I'm just searing the outside. Next up, the truffle mousse that goes on the lamb. Have a look in there at the consistency that you can see. Yep. It's going to be good. Oh, I can't believe that. I forgot the egg whites. Why didn't somebody remind me? How's that? You know, like I'm blaming everybody else except myself for forgetting the egg whites. Silly mistake, but there's an easy fix. Get the next batch right. Now, egg white. Then fold the two together. You know what you're doing? No idea, mate. Can you come and give me a hand? Can we use a brick or something? Smoko's underway, so we've got all the smart ass comments streaming in now. We've got some truffle cream, so we're going to mix some of this in here. I think we've killed the machine making the mousse. Uh oh, looks like I'm in the doo doos. <laughs> the machine stopped working and it started to smoke. An electrical fault on a gas platform could present a major hazard. Oh, just as well <laughs> you got the last batch done, is all I can say. <laughs> Bugger. This machine looks like it's done the hard yard, so I don't feel quite so bad about <laughs> the fact that we <laughs> broke it. <laughs> Time to move swiftly on to my cauliflower puree. So what we've done in here is we've got the onions, which we've sweated down, then we've added the cauliflower. Let's have some more butter in here. This is black truffle oil. Not too bad, huh? You like that? So we've got our garlic, our stock, Sugar and butter. So basically what we made here is a custard. And then we've put some broccoli in there and we're putting these beautiful panoli New Zealand pine nuts in there. And I'm going to serve this with our lamb wellington. I'm hoping they're going to like it. <laughs> Somehow I don't think these boys will be backwards and coming forward if they don't. 
probably know a lot of us Maori boys are pretty passionate about our foods and we're pretty honest. I do like my food and I've been rubbing. <laughs> I'll see so, so. <laughs> This is the world famous Tony Astle's meringue roulade. So now into the oven. Because I'm tying up the ovens, John has sorted out a cold lunch for the crew. And the boys are doing a great job in the kitchen. Come with me, we're going to look, see if we can't find Simon. Here we are at Simon's room, we'll just have a quick peek. Definitely in bed at sleep. Not a good look. So who's going to do the rest of the cooking tonight? Looks like it's us. Fear not, lads. It was just a power nap. There's not much chance of sleeping for long around here. There are all the supplies coming on board. They've had to wait two days for the weather to get OK, where the swell's not too great, to bring them on board without it being dangerous. And I would say that's still pretty dangerous. Container rod's going to hit the side. Wow, the swell. Even the water's coming onto the back of their boat now. I better get back in the kitchen where I belong. And yeah, Simon's back. I'll bet they never even miss me, eh? There's still a long way to go, but with the crew coming in for afternoon tea, it's time to reveal my menu. Looks pretty bloody good, mate. You're hungry just looking at it. Oh, wicked. Man, that's a menu for kings, bro. Can't wait. You wouldn't believe it, these guys are all back and eating again. There's slice, there's mince pies, and it's only two hours away from my bloody dinner, so I hope they don't fill up too much. Now we're just uh, taking the foil off our uh, roulades so we can uh, get them ready to cream up and uh, get ready for service. It's been full on. I and mean, then we've got our work cut out for us. There's a lot to do, a lot of prep. This is balsamic and strawberry, which is kind of a little bit different. There's four of us in the kitchen and we kept pretty busy. Roll out like a sushi roll up. Starting to get a bit of pressure put on us. <laughs> These guys are sensational. I mean, out of all these programs I've done and everywhere I've been, without doubt, the best help I've got. Awesome. We're just on an hour and a half to go. We're busting into the lambs now, and the A-team is working their butts off. <laughs> <laughs> Two down, 58 to go. I've called this a lamb wellington, but there'll be people at home that will be watching this and go, that's not a lamb wellington. And my bet is there's hardly any of those guys out there have a clue what a lamb wellington is, so I'm safe. How do they like their meat cook? Uh, well done. Well done? Yeah, I had a, one guy come up to me already and said, make sure mine comes out with no blood. So they don't like their meat rare, they don't like blood and steaks, most of them have a medium. Serving lamb medium well goes against all my instincts, but when on Maui... So to me, that's a bit overdone, but you think that's oh, how they like it? That's how they like it. Shall we have a taste? Good, good. It's beautiful. So, 10 minutes, and what did we decide? 200. 200. Out on deck, there's no shortage of opinions. You could tell he was green as when he came in give us a hand yesterday because it's right out of the zone, you know. I suppose he's better at uh, cooking than he is at a bit of labouring work. Well, let's hope so. What's he got? About 38 hungry men tonight, so we'll find out. Let's just hope I don't start a riot. So half an hour to go, guys. We need the potatoes floured. We need to be thinking about when we're going to get the lamb in. There's still 15 minutes to go, but the first punters are already queuing in the lounge, and they look hungry. But we've got nothing to give them yet. Ten minutes to go, everybody. Hey, guys. Come through and sit down at the tables and I'm going to serve your first course shortly. <laughs> Look out. Here they come. Get the prawns in real quick. We've got two minutes and we're going to have them on the table. OK, let's start getting these on, right? The calamari's taking longer than I thought. This is not a good start. John, quickly, I need some more of these from over there. I need three on each, and I don't have enough, right? So just keep them coming, mate. Keep them coming. 
20 hungry crewmen and we're still waiting on the calamari. It's my last night on Maui A. Time for my big dinner, but I'm already behind the eight ball. Yeah, prawns, more prawns, many more prawns. Okay, I'm miles away, mate, I'm miles away, and they're all sitting there. More calamari. So four prawns on each one, three calamari. Heaps more, Sam? Yeah, man. Yeah, heaps more, man. Go, 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 just look on the plate. We have them, see, we're at about halfway. I need one more bit of calamari on there and that can go. It's a lemon. Finally, we've got some food on the table, but how will it go down with the crew? Well, at least you're all quiet for a change. So you've got prawns, you've got calamari, and you've got a wasabi and sumac mayonnaise, so a little bit spicy. If I had to pay for it, I probably would. It's generally a good sign when people are eating food if they're quiet. It's a little bit greasy. It's the only thing I can say about it. Besides that, it's quite nice. So, mixed reviews for the calamari. I'm hoping for better with my next courses. It was on 137. That's all right. The ovens are 70 degrees colder than they should be, but right now I need to get my soup out. Just like three in each. And it's hard to say what the guys will make of my culinary trickery. So what we got is we got like this carrot, like it's like liquid carrot, but when, when we put it in there, what happens is it's actually going to turn into a noodle because it's got vegetable cellulose in there and just the reaction from the vegetable cellulose. At least I'm getting some laughs. It's just It'll turn into a noodle, so sort of mix it around a bit. It's going down well. A bit different to chicken nuggets. <laughs> Looks like the jury's still out. Let's hope the lamb can win some votes. Now let's just double check these ones. Like I think some of these need a little bit more. Okay, stop, stop. You can see we have blood coming out. I want to give, I want to give this tray a little bit more. I know these boys can't stand the sight of blood so it's got to be well cooked. I do not like my blood and my steaks. So this is the cauliflower and truffle puree going on. A little bit of that on each one, and then they can go. Smoking. That looks expensive. Very, very expensive. Yeah, that can go. The food's not supposed to bleed. <laughs> Here's hoping. Mains have just gone. We're exactly 32 minutes past five, so I think we're, we're well and truly on the schedule. I need that recipe for the cauliflower. Mm. That was mean. It makes the taste buds go crazy. It's got a nice taste to it. It's very nice. Um, it's just about perfect, as far as I understand. The lamb's hit the spot. I'm into the home straight now with dessert. So we're now starting to plate the meringue roulade up. We've got uh, strawberry and balsamic vinegar in there. Bit unusual, be interesting to see their reaction. What's that song? Ah, uh, just a little magic trick of some bronze powder, edible bronze powder. That I keep in my little oh, box of tricks. Box of tricks, eh? Yeah. What flavour is that? Yes, please. And it seems the meringue roulade is going down a treat. You want a bit? Good. So, 45 minutes gone. It's quarter to six. We've got all four courses out. Now what I need these guys to do is hoover down that dessert and get the hell out of my restaurant so I can do another load. Time for the second sitting. Let's hope I get a similar response. Mm. It's quite nice. Yeah, it's lovely. It's two minutes past six. First course is gone, second round. See, a bit of practice all helps. The oven temperature is all good. Awesome, love your work. And, uh, Yet again, silence out there in the dining room. Quiet, let's say quiet. It's good, it's good. Gotta be good. Let's try that noodle trick again. It's like liquid carrot, but when it hits the hot liquid, because I put vegetable cellulose in it, it turns into a noodle. What a fuss for a noodle, if you ask me. But, but it's kind of cool how the liquid turns into a noodle. They do feel like noodles, but you do, you do have the, the carrot paste in there as well. 
and the dumplings and the, and the noodles certainly make it a bit unusual, so yeah, i definitely have another go of that, for sure. Well, I'm pretty sure they'll like the lamb too. So if it looks good, it's going to taste good. And that, that looks like a $1,000 there. Broccoli and pine nut custard. A bit flash. I've got some tough critics out there. I see um, they shows you what's on Master Chef. It goes by itself. Your little top. At least it maybe should have been just a little bit more straightened up if you're going for presentation. <laughs> you know, so you just need to tell them to work on that a little bit, but that'd be good. It tastes expensive. <laughs> <laughs> and I know they'll like the roulade to finish. Well, that looks spectacular. That's beautiful. Well, if you're going to get food like this every day, who wants to go? <laughs> <laughs> Mission accomplished with the help of the A-team. Well done, guys. So we're three minutes earlier than the first lot and it was pretty leisurely, wasn't it? Uh, you know where I am in Auckland, lunch is on me whenever you turn up, right? I'll hold you to that. That's what I like to hear. I thought round one went really well. I thought round two went even better. It was a godsend having those guys in the kitchen. If I was going into battle again, those are the guys I want on my side. But it's all about what the customer thinks, and it's time to face the music and find out the result. So guys, we've had Simon in here doing a fantastic job outside, and uh, I'm sure you'd agree an even better job inside. So it's been a pleasure having you, Simon. I guess now's the time just to show him what you thought of his meal. They were a tough crowd, so I'd have to be happy with those numbers. Awesome. Wicked. Awesome. Hey, well, thank you very much for having me. It's been a real privilege to get out and see what you guys do. I've been pretty awesome to have a little taste of it and to work with these guys who are rock stars. Don't you agree? Yeah. yeah. So thanks for having me. Until I got out here, I knew very little about what Maui A platform was all about and what a huge contribution they make to the New Zealand energy source. Man, those guys work hard. They welcomed me with open arms. What a great bunch of people. John in the kitchen made my life a breeze great guys. I'd almost say I'm going to miss them and I'd like to stay, but I've got to tell you, I'm looking forward to getting back to dry land. That's my final mission in this series. It's been an absolute blast and I've loved every minute of it. See you next time. Plating up 38 meals. you got big balls. Maybe not a good share, but he's a pretty good cook. Who's hungry? Yeah! Hey, survive, which is a key thing. That's what we're looking for. They just keep them coming. We're on fire. Now let's rock and roll, guys. Yeah. Hoping to up the ante and give him a dinner he'll never remember. <laughs> <laughs>